Egypt was full of tension. Amr ibn Nas moved to the Nile with an army in the hope of becoming the ruler of Egypt. Muhammad ibn Abba Bakr asked the central government for help in order to confront the army of Amir ibn Nas. But the people in Kufa once again betrayed Imam Ali and turned down his call. The Imam knew that only someone like Malik al-Ashtar could deal with Amr ibn Nas. Therefore, he sent Malik there as the governor of Egypt. But Amr ibn Nas's scheme put an end to the life of the devoted commander of Ali's army on his way to Egypt. Muhammad ibn Abba Bakr felt offended because of Ashtar's designation as the governor of Egypt. Imam Ali wrote a letter to him and said, I've heard that you're upset because of Ashtar's designation as the governor of Egypt. What I did was not because I thought you were inefficient or I expected you to try harder. I'll appoint you as the governor of a region where you can establish law and order more easily. The man I appointed as the governor of Egypt would always work for our benefit and was tough with the enemies and would always fight with them. May God have mercy on his soul. Muhammad, rise up against the enemy and move forward. Keep your eyes open and be prepared for a battle. Muhammad ibn Abba Bakr fought against the army of schemes on unequal terms and was martyred after a courageous battle. They put the young commander inside a dead donkey's body and burned him. After hearing the sad news, the Imam went to the mosque time and again to complain about the infidelity of the people in Kufa. Now I'm struggling with the people who won't obey my commands and don't listen to what I say. You cowards. What are you waiting for? Why don't you take steps to support the religion of God? Do you follow any religion that can help you? Is there anything that can make you angry? I called on you to help your brothers. But just like a camel that suffers from a pain in the chest and the injuries on its back, which doesn't let it move forward, you started complaining and didn't even bother to move. Oh, men, you only look like men. Shame on you, shame on you. I say shame on all of you. I wish Ali had never seen you. I wish Ali didn't know any of you. 
Shame on all of you! Open your eyes! Ali is gone! We don't care that he's gone. What should we do? Insult after insult! What do you expect from the people who are cursed and insulted over any excuse? All Ali ever does is criticize us. The people in Kufa have danced to his tune so far. They're fed up with the killing and getting killed. Has the enemy occupied the city of Anbar? Who cares? Is it Kufa's turn after Anbar? Tell me, who cares? These people want to rejuvenate themselves away from swords and bloodshed for a little while. Why don't you just leave them alone? You had better change your clothes. You are just like the wicked old woman in the Levant. Ali didn't call you what you really are, only because of his respect. For this place and the pulpit. So I'll complete it. I tell you to make a revision in your oaths. And also in your agreements and pledges. Arabs! We pledge allegiance with our blood! To which of your pledges have you been committed? Kufa is in danger of being invaded by the enemy. But you unfaithful elders only talk about your being tired. Moria's soldiers can even come to your kitchens and taste your wives' cooking without asking for your permission. You're all just a bunch of unreliable insiders! The invasion of the cities in Iraq by the army of the Levant on the one hand and Imam Ali's sermons on the other eventually woke up the sleeping hearts of the dishonest sheikhs of Kufa. The people of Kufa equipped the army and gathered in Nokiale under the command of Hassan and Hussein. They were determined to foil the plots of the army of the Levant. During those days, Muhaviye was obsessed with succession of the Caliphate in the Umayyad dynasty and was paving the way for Yazid's ruling without feeling any threat from the Kufis. It seemed that he was sure the allegiance of the Kufis to Ali would not last long. Kufa was ready for new events.
Oh, hi. Huh? Only someone as brave as a lion can trespass Satum's empire. Who are you? I'm a guest. Oh. As far as I can remember, I hadn't even sent an invitation to anyone. I'm a stranger in Kufa. I don't know anyone. Stop the blasphemy, uh. rebel. Uh. Are you blind that you can't see God in Kufa? Ah. Uh. God? They've only taught you to make your elbows wet and put your forehead on the ground and worship God for fear of being punished. What should I do? Uh, 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 uh. Don't you know? Uh. No, you don't. Oh, some water so I can wash my hands. Pour it! Blow on the coal to make a fire. You know how to do it, don't you? Go. Yeah. If you see him, your prayers won't be a duty anymore. They become a feeling. They become a feeling. Have you seen him? No. But I do have a friend who has seen him. Who is he? You'll see him. Come here. Come sit here. Come on. You must be hungry, right? I have some bread and dates in my bag. Can I bring no. it? He'll be here now. Did you recognize it? No. Smell it. Don't you know the scent of heaven? No, I don't. He was the Kali. No. He's my friend and conqueror at the Battle of Kaiba. <laughs> hey, stranger. What have you hidden in your eyes? Do you think that I'll make my soul impure with flattery over a bite of food? Never! 
Look at my arm. I can make bread out of a stone. This food is just an excuse to see him. Sometimes he listens to what I say for hours. What do you think? I really cannot fathom. You can talk to him. If you deserve. Of course. <coughs> what are you looking for in this hellhole, you cunning fox? You, you'll find that hens are kept in palaces. Here you can't find anything but the rubble and lizards. You're worse than the devil. <laughs> Come inside. <laughs> When are you going to die, you fossil? I won't die earlier than you, Sheik. <laughs> because I don't have big dreams. What mm. do you want? I want to save the Arab's reputation. I've come here to take the stranger to my house so he wouldn't think that the people in Kufa are up in arms against strangers. Come on, let's go. Where to? To my house, brother. We're still alive. We won't let our brothers stay in hell holes. Go. Go. I'm sorry. Go. Soon. Soon you become the hero of an event. What? Let's go. He's talking nonsense. No. Did you kill him? No. Who? Who? Ali. Ali? Don't be scared, Muradi. My deep-rooted Kendi tribe and I are here with you for support. You have to be committed to the pledge you've given to your friends. What pledge? No one more? <laughs> Sleeplessness. 
nightmare, distress. <laughs> you have been my guest here for a while now. You don't get a good night's sleep. You don't trust me when you are awake. But you trusted me when you were asleep. There are three of you. You vowed in Kaaba that you'll kill them on the night of destiny. Ali, Amer, and Moawir. Oh, so you found out about it. Well, kill them. This secret has been eating my soul for a while now. I feel that the whole world has become a pair of eyes that are following me. Help me, Ashas. Ali, I cannot kill him. Are you tired of the trip? I'm tired of the trip. Tired of homelessness. Tired of false beliefs. Tired of an eternal shame. Hmm. Do you remember that old man in the hellhole? Sadun. Soon you will become the hero of a big event. Before Narawan, I went to see Ali to get my share of the public treasury. Ali looked me in the eye and asked about my tribe. He quoted a saying from the Prophet, but I never understood its meaning. The most ruthless person is the man who... who will dye Ali's beard with the blood of his head. I'm Abdul Rahman, a harmless vagrant Arab. I'm supposed to be the most ruthless Arab in history, Ash'as. Any saying deserves to be heard and respected. I have an aunt, you know, and the words that she speaks are as worthy as the ones in the Bible. But nobody talks about her sayings because they don't know her. Your doubt is because of your fear, Murad. Fear of what? We'll talk about it later. You feel better when the room is dark. Ali wants to pay for the blood of three men with three sacks of flour. You're very cruel. You're a witch. You're cursed. You haven't brought anything to this house but bad luck and ill omens since you were born. Are you hungry? You can become a cow, plow the land and make some bread to eat. As long as I'm alive, you can't make bread with the flour that Ali gives us from the public treasury. What should I give in return? Should I give my family in return for three sacks of flour? We've run out of supplies, you see. We're all women. Our tribes are short of supplies. To hell with us. Have mercy on these children. This is your share. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. The children can eat their father's head. You're a mother. Instead of the mercy of the public treasury, sing a lullaby about the horror of Nara One. Instead of giving them bread, teach them how to take revenge. You're thirsty for blood, but I'm not. I'll kiss merciful hands. The door to this hell has always been open. If you're upset, you can go back to your father's palace, which is full of droppings and lice. 
I feel sorry. I feel sorry for myself that I've never seen any kindness in this hell. L look at my fate. Yesterday, fire. Today, fire. Our hearts are raging with fire. Our heads are as hot as fire. Why should I thank you? Stop the blasphemy, girl. <laughs> Grief can kill people just like hunger kills people. Otam is grieving over the tame Al Robab tribe. Abba Gotam wasn't an ordinary man. Gotam! Gotam! Have you seen a white clad demon in the well again? What does that man who looks like a dog want? From you, nothing. I don't have anything to lose, but think about yourself, girl. Kufa is full of lecherous eyes. What does he want from you? Stop it. If you want to backbite and do something mischievous, go and talk to the widows in the neighborhood. Why are you talking like this? I didn't shout or grieve. You saw that for yourself. Hmm, I saw that. Bravo. You're like one of my aunts. Go tell the man who looks like a dog to come inside. <gasps> oh. The old man, the one who looks like a dog, is a member of this family. He is not a stranger at all. Greetings to you. The daughter of Kufa, the queen of strange joys and stranger nostalgias. Greetings, the thousand-faced man of Kufa. It's, it's a mystery to me that you've gone to so many battles and have returned unhurt without any injury or disability. My heart is so full of injuries from the spears of the many battles. I honestly do not think anyone in Kufa deserves to be my confidant. Except you, Gotham. What are you doing? As you can see. I'm killing every moment of my life. I saw that. When you were burning Ali's sacks of mercy, I was standing right there. It was like the Battle of the Camel. You're the daughter of history, Gotham. Your moments are the moments of all Arabs. Don't waste them. This, this voice is the voice of an aristocratic commander. <laughs> In which palace do I have the honor of meeting you? In any place that you wish. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Listen, uncle. I'm just an ordinary, lonely girl. I can trade with any sheikh in any meeting in Kufa so my father would come back to life for a moment. With the same, with the same whispers of prayers and the smell of sweat on his turban and cloak. I'll give the jewels of all palaces for the moment my mother comes back to life so I can put my head on her shoulder and cry over the past 20 years of my life. I want my naive brothers so I can fool them with my tricks once again. My life is torn to pieces. If you can't help me, don't leave me devastated. Curse be upon Kufa. Curse be upon the murderers of your loved ones. Curse be upon your lies. Curse be upon hypocrisy. You cowardly sheikh were proud that you were fighting in Nara one for Ali. People like you got ready once again to go to another battle. I will take revenge for you, Gotam. Revenge? From who? Ali. Ali? Uh -huh. I don't know anyone in this world who's as determined as Ali is. Oh, girl, you can move a mountain with your look.
That's an exaggeration, Sheik. I'm not that beautiful. When I was fourteen, I wanted to cut off my nose with a dagger. Huh. Do you know why? Because it's ugly. <laughs> I'll bring a man named Ibn Muljam here. He'll become infatuated with this nose and face and will make the impossible possible. Ibn Muljam? Uh-huh. He's from the Murad tribe. He is wounded in Narawan. He's come to Kufa to kill Ali. But I don't know what has made him change his mind. I have to see him. I want to see him. Not, not to make him love me. I want to know how brave he really is. There are three of them. And all three of them vowed in Kaaba. They all vowed that they will finish off Mowie, as well as Amir and Ali, simultaneously on the Night of Destiny. Before the crack of dawn. Do something, Otam. Kufa's back is breaking under Ali's justice. I'll accept him. Thank you. I've heard many times that if a devil kisses a young girl's hand, blood and pus will ooze from the spot it has kissed. Oh. Send us a few sacks of flour. I'll send them tonight. <laughs> hmm. Tell me, Ibn Muljam, what do you think about women? I've never thought about them. <laughs> so you've never thought about them. <laughs> you've never wanted to think about them. No, but either God or women. You can't think about both of them at the same time. Have you divorced your wife? No. I've never had the chance to get married. So that is why you're so lonely. Yes. I'm lonely. I'm really lonely. Hmm. A lonely man is like a moving corpse and is full of fear. Your distress is a direct result of your fear. I know a very experienced healer who can help. She can bring dead bodies back to life by just looking at them. Do you want to go visit her? No, because she's a woman. Don't say blasphemy, Muradi. We were both raised by women. Oh, pious man, the important thing is to see a woman and talk to her without shaking. Do you know any prophet who would stay away from women? Being ungrateful to God-given blessings is a sin, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever do you mean by talking? Do you want to treat your ill soul? My illness will only be cured by worshipping God. In the name of Allah, compassion, merciful. When they said, Joseph, his brother, and more beloved to our father than we, while we are a clan, indeed our father is in clear error. In the name of Allah, You have to change your place, Muradi. What? Many people come to this house, but this house is not a safe place. You have to go to the house of a girl from the tame Al-Rabab tribe named Gotam. Mm -hmm. She is the daughter of the late, great... 
Abba Gautam. Abba Gautam was a unique person. He was a very good friend of mine and God's. Gautam isn't a girl. She's a piece of jewelry who reminds us of three martyrs. If you're really worried about your faith, be a brother to her. Gautam. 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 Gautam, where have I heard this name? Put on your clothes, Moradi. Gautam is waiting for you. I rely on God. I'll come with you. <gasps> oh, don't worry. Let's go. Why are you carrying a sword, girl? <laughs> a house without a man isn't safe, uncle. <laughs> Ibn Muljam Muradi. Come inside. Oh God, I ask for forgiveness. Go inside, go. <laughs> Looking at the ground, Muradi. There's no strangers in this house. Gautam is the only man in Kufa. I take refuge in God. This girl has penetrating eyes. I'm worried I might lose my faith. Oh God. Be strong. I didn't expect a man from Narawan to shake from the miracle of a girl's eyes. Don't let the devil tempt you. No, this house isn't safe, Ashas. Come on, let's go. Don't ruin everything. If you stay in my house, everyone will find out what you're up to. <gasps> hmm. Hmm. He's finished, sorceress. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I ask for forgiveness. God, I ask for forgiveness. Oh, 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 God, I ask for forgiveness. The prayer mat is ready. I've already said my prayers. I thought you said night prayers like other people. In Narawan. <laughs> of course, of course. It was a good reminder, lady. Water, rose water and toothbrush.
Allah. Who are you running away from? Oh, the unfortunate man of the Murad tribe. Haven't you heard that the black-eyed daughter of Kufa is God's rival? I've captured your soul by the miracle of my captivating eyes. Your soul will fly away if I just hint at it, you poor man. You're my servant, not God's servant. Don't make any useless effort. You'll only make yourself tired. I've pinned my hopes on the power of your sword on the night of destiny before the crack of dawn. <laughs> 